We all know very well the katha of Sant Tulsidashi highlighted in the golden pages of the Ram, Sri Ram Charitamanas. We all are very familiar with most of the kathas. As a matter of fact, one of the most common texts in our dharma in this part of the world is the Ram Charitamanas. So every katha that we read, everybody will know the katha line or the story line that is very common. So if you were to say, what is the Ramayana about? Every average person will say, well, it's the story or the katha of the prince of Ayodhya, whose father, King Dashrat, through the Putreshtikam Yagya, performed and he was blessed with four sons, etc., etc. And like that, the katha goes on. And then eventually, Sri Ram got, um, went to the forest and he broke the Shiva Dhanush. And he got married to the daughter of King Janak. He brought her back to Ayodhya. There he governed for a little while. But then, Mother Kaikeyi was influenced by her best friend. Mother Kaike was influenced by her best friend, whose name we all know it was Mantra, not Mantra, Mantra. And Mantra, my friends, we have to understand and analyze the character that we call Mantra, and we have to learn from the character that is being portrayed through Mantra, through Mother Kaike, and we have to also understand that all these things that happened, they didn't happen by guess. It was all pre-planned. It was all pre-planned when Bhagwan Vishnu decided to take Avatar and to come down upon the face of this earth. He put all these people in place, in different places to act different roles. So we must not get on a high horse or a rage and say, well, Mantra was evil or Mother Kaikai was evil. We should not allow the evil part or be the one to judge. We should study the Katha and we should try to learn something from it. And that's why also in every episode of our own lives, try to learn something that we can better ourselves. I want to ask everyone this evening to be very careful of one thing in your life. Be careful of your reaction to situations. Be careful of your reaction to people. The way you react towards them, whether it's a good situation or a bad situation, your reaction is, plays a very important part in creating your karma. This morning, I was at the Patiram Trace Mandir um, and performing puja there for a, a nice, beautiful family. And someone just walked up to me and said, Panditji, can I ask you a question? I said, yes, sure. So we went to put the jandi, etc. and the person asked the question. He said, you know, I want to know the difference between the different type of karma. I said, well, there's a katha for the night. <laughs> because we have three different types of karma. You have sanchita karma, you have prarabdha karma, and you have agami karma. But in short, I told him, I said, sanchita karma is karmas that were done all the way down in all the different lives before now. And then that manifests in the form of prarabdha. So what we are going through now is prarabdha. And then he said, so then, if that is Prarabdha, then what is Agami? I said, well, very important point. Agami is, Agami karma means according to how you react now in the present situation that you are in or how you react to people, that is going to create either good karma or bad karma that we have to call Agami for the future. So, always pay very close attention and always be aware and alert of your reaction to situations and to people that you are, that is in the present moment of your life. Be aware of your reaction. And how do you be aware? How do you be aware of your reaction? by being aware of yourself. 
Be aware of you. Look at how your mind is thinking. Look at how the mind is forming emotions towards the situation that you are currently in. Because friends, we don't want to create more karma. We want to be freed from karma. Can I ask you to practice that for one, for five seconds now? Just close your eyes for five seconds and look at you. Okay, five seconds done. <laughs> Come on. Close your eyes and just look, visualize you and be aware of what is happening inside of you, not around you. And you will see that in that silent moment, you can call it meditation, you can call it reflection, you can call it a moment of awareness. The mind is very quiet. The mind is very calm. The mind is very peaceful. Until, my friends, we come into contact with the world outside. And tonight we want to call the world outside in the form of this character called as Mantra. Tulsi Dashi tells in a very beautiful Chopai, he says, that just as we are observing and being aware of ourselves, Mantra was being aware and she was paying a very keen attention to Mother Kaikai as preparations for the coronation of Bhagwan Sri Ram were on the way. Sri Ram Jaya Ram Jaya Jaya Ram Everyone Sri Ram Jaya Ram Jaya की बातें कोमल हैं पर परिणाम में कतूर हैं मानो ये 
सहब में गोल कर जाहर पिला रही हो दासी कहती है हे स्वामिनी सुनते ही कथा मुझे कही थी उसकी याद में की नहीं हे स्वामिन ओ माई you know what we say in local language boss lady boss lady did you remember what i told you so she is speaking to mother kai kai do you remember and you know my friends what was very unique about mantra her words was sweet like honey it is said here sunat baat mrdu ant katori her words were very sweet like honey and you know i wonder why I wonder why sometimes when people want to destroy us they speak sweet words Isn't it Sometimes we have to be very careful that when people are speaking sweet words their intention could be very bad But you know we supposed to speak sweet But then why our intention is bad Eh honey <laughs> Han calling people honey and thing but your intention is not good and this is exactly what was mantra's mission you know mantra's words were sweet like honey but the result of those words were going to be very very detrimental not only to mantra but to mother kekai to the king the the young yuvaraj the yuvaraj means the crown prince and not only to, the, to him the crown prince but to the king himself and not only to the king but to every single citizen of ayodhya they were now going to suffer because of these sweet words of mantra friends and you know what you know what is the sad part the sad part is mantra was not aware of what she was about to do Mantra was not paying any attention to herself and she was not paying any attention to her words she was not paying any attention to the result of what was going to happen and this is why we have to be very careful we have to be careful in the sense that not only think about yourself but think think about those around you when you say certain things when you are thinking certain things and when your actions when our actions not you our including myself when our actions are being performed we have to be very careful who could benefit from our thoughts our words and our action in a positive way or in a negative way be very aware my friends and tonight i want you to remember this word awareness of awareness of yourself awareness of you awareness of your thoughts awareness of your emotions because every thought is like energy every word is like energy every action is energy energy is all around us but we have the power to convert that energy we have the 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 power to convert that energy into positive energy or into negative energy mantra my dear brothers and sisters she is speaking to the the, the mother kaikai and she is speaking with this intention as if she is administering honey and sweetness into the life of mother kaikai friends sometimes we have to be very careful of words that are too sweet young people all the youths who are here in this mandir tonight and we have lots of the youths to all the youths who are viewing on sankhya and facebook etc be very careful of people using sweet words to convince us into a certain trend of thought and action that could be very detrimental to ourselves and those around us do you not remember kahi ai chori radha cheri sudhi ahaha ki nahi he swamin kahi hu katha mohi pahi do you not remember my lady 
Do you not remember what I told you of an event that took place in the past? Do you want me to remind you? And Tulsidashi reminds us the words of mantra. It says, वरदान आज राजा से मांग कर अपनी छाती ठड़ी करो भरत के लिए राज्य हो राम के लिए बनवास मांगो और सौर के सारा आनंद तुम ले 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 लो मंत्रा माय फ्रेंड्स वाज जस्ट लाइक यू नो यू नो द ओल्ड पीपल हैव अ सेइंग बाय गोविंदरा यू नो द ओल्ड पीपल हैव अ सेइंग दे से Some people don't see further than their nose. When last you all hear that? <laughs> Some people don't see further than their nose. And what that saying is, we just can't see or anticipate or judge a situation based on our individual vision we have to think about the outcome as the the first chop i suggested that we have to think about the results you see what might be good for us may not be good for everyone here what might be good for me may not be good for everyone here what might be good for you may not be good for me and so we have to think about it not that we have to please everybody but we have to be very cautious and try to make a decision that is based on the majority we have to make a decision based on the majority and here tulsi um, tulsi dashi tells that mantra she was very eager to remind to remind mother kk of the two boons apne daro hastwale ke vardan aur raja ke mang kar apne chati chati tari 
So she was very much, you know, anxious to remind Mother Kaikai of the two boons. And friends, the two boons, you all must have heard the katha at some point, where in the early days when Maharaj Dashrath was very young and he was in the war, he was fighting against evil and negativities and it so happened the axle of his chariot was broken by an arrow or by a thunderbolt or something. And Mother KK, who was a very loyal Dharma Patni, a very loyal wife, she had the Vardhan because she used to pray to Ma Durga. And Mother Durga blessed her with a Vardhan that her body will become like steel whenever she wants it. So what she did was, when she saw that the axle of the chariot of Maharaj Dashat got broken, she decided to put her hand as the axle. So the wheel was rolling on the arm, on the hand of Mother Kaikai. And Maharaj Dashrat won the war through the blessing of Ma Durga Devi and through the blessing of his Dharma Patni, Ma Kaikai. He was so happy. He told her, he said, my beloved, anything you want, I will give it to you. And we have to be very careful also. You see, when you're too happy, don't make a promise. Jai Bhagwan. Sometimes when you're real happy, you tell me anything you want, man. I promise you I'll give it. And then when reality sets in, <laughs> when reality sets in and you cannot fulfill that promise, then you find yourself in danger. No, Maharaj Dashrat, he was so excited that he won the war. He told Mother Kaiki, anything you want, Two boons, I promise you, I will give it to you. You want it now, I give it to you. Or in the future, at any point in time, I will give it to you. But look at what mantra did. Mantra now used those same two boons, which are supposed to be blessings, and she turned it into a curse. See what people can do. People can turn blessing into a curse. And, you know, they, they pronounce a shrap upon themselves. In the local dialect that our forefathers came with, you know, they sarape yourself. You take your blessing and you sarape yourself. Friends, analyze carefully all that you have in your life that is a blessing. That's why the saying goes, always count your blessings, never your troubles. Count your blessing. Everybody can raise your right hand. Raise your right hand, let me see. Look how blessed you are. Raise your left hand. Hands up. <laughs> Hands down. <laughs> see how blessed you are. You are fortunate. We are blessed. You all can, how many of you can see me here? How many of you can hear me? Do you know we have one person here who cannot hear me? Do you know? One person here who cannot hear me. There is one person who is here who cannot say a word to any of us. But he is sitting as a shota tonight with love in his heart. And not maybe, maybe, I, I don't know, I'm just uh, guessing that he probably not understanding anything that is happening here in terms of what I'm saying. But... His heart might be in a totally different place to where your heart and my heart is. Don't turn your blessing into a curse because mantra was the wrong company for Mother Keke. And uh, mantra, what she did was she had taken Sri Ram out of her thoughts. She had taken Sri Ram out of her mind. She forgot who Sri Ram really was. And when our intention is bad, friends, even goodness becomes poison. When our intention is bad. Mantra. She, my dear brothers and sisters, had forgotten. Jag me saacho tero na. Jag me saacho tero na. Hera. Hera. This is what Mantra had forgotten. She had forgotten that this is the Ram whose name is the Saacho Tera Naam. His name is the only truth. 
mantra had forgotten this because her mind now became crooked and her mind became bent just like her body. Tulsi Das, she says, mantra was about to invoke these two boons into the mind of Kaiki because she had forgotten who Sri Ram was. Mantra had forgotten and now she is going to make sure that Kaiki also forgets. Era, 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 era. She had forgotten that Sri Ram is Antaryami. He knows the heart of every one of us. She had forgotten that Sabaka Swami, that he is the master of the entire world, not only of Ayodhya. Tu Antaryami, Sabaka Swami. Antaryami Sabaka Swami Tere Charno Me Charo She had forgotten that Sri Ram is Tuhi Jagadatta, the well wisher of the entire world. Vishwavidatta. She had forgotten, my friends, who Sri Ram was. She had forgotten. Why? Because she thought, because of her own emotions. Sri Ram is just an ordinary being. Brothers and sisters, our minds could get us into serious trouble when we entertain the wrong thoughts in the company of the wrong people. 
we destroy ourselves. Tu hi jag data, Vishwa vi data. Tu hi jag data, Vishwa vi data. Tu hi subah, tu hi shah. My friends, she had forgotten who Sri Ram was. Can I ask you all a question? What causes a person to forget who God is? Anybody, can you tell me? Huh? Ego? Yeah, ego, E-G-O. Erase God out. <laughs> Anybody else? I'm sorry? When a person gets lost into the material world? Okay. One more, one more reason. Anger? Well, to be honest, we could go on and on. And everybody right. There are so many reasons. There are so many reasons that we can forget God. But I want to tell you something. What all of you said is 100% right. In this case, Mantra was really jealous that Sri Ram was going to become king and Bharat was going to become just an ordinary citizen. So she wanted Bharat to become king and she wanted Sri Ram to go to the forest. But I want to tell you something. She forgot Sri Ram is God. Why? Because Mantra, my dear friends, had forgotten herself. You see, the biggest mistake, the biggest spiritual mistake that we can make in life is when we forget ourselves. When we forget our true nature and when we forget who truly we are, 
that is when we will forget God. We will lose faith in God. We would lose faith in ourselves. We would lose faith in Bhagwan. That's why Sri Mohandas Karamchan Gandhi ji, when he wrote and sang, Ragupati Raghav Raj. Bab, can you just raise their volume? <laughs> Ragupati Raghav Raja Ram Sita Ram Oh Sita Ram Jai Bolo Ragupati Raghava Ishwar Oh Ishwar Bolo Ragupati Raghav Aja Ram Patita Pavan Sita Ram You see that line? When Sri Gandhiji, he had found himself back in 1946, around that time, when he was fighting for the independence of India, and when he wanted to bring the Hindus and Muslims together, he said, don't fight on religion. Ishwar Allah, Tero Naam, Sab Ko Sanmati De Bhagavan. When we forget ourselves, and when we forget our true identity, and when we forget our divine nature, friends, then we will have a name and a form for God that will fit into the pitya frame of our belief. But when we have, when we understand our true identity, then the pitya frame of this universe will be that Bhagwan is Isha Vasamidam Sarvam. He is everything in this world. Neha Nanasti Kinchana, according to the Upanishad. It says here that a person who never lose contact with them, with their spiritual self, will recognize God in every atom in, in the universe. They will never fight and quarrel on this thing. So Mantra's intention was to also get Mother Kaikai to forget who Sri Ram was. And anytime you find yourself in the company of people who try to confuse you about yourself or confuse you about your God, that is not a good company. The result will be very dangerous for you. The outcome will be very dangerous. Mantra forgot that Sri Ram was not just the prince of Ayodhya, but he was the light of Ayodhya. He was the light of Ayodhya. You know what Mantra did not thought of? Mantra did not think of was that when Sri Ram leaves Ayodhya and he would go to the forest for 14 years because in this Chaupai she says here, Bharat ke liye Rajya aur Ram ke banbas mango aur saut ka sara anand tum le ho. She also indicated that Bharat must become the king and send Ram to the forest. But what she forgot, my dear friends, it is like taking off the electricity in this mandir for 14 years. Take off the electricity in the mandir for 14 years. Take off the electricity in your home for 14 years. Take out the blood in your body for 14 years. When you come back, you don't have a body, you know. No body. <laughs> Everything becomes what? That thing done, gone long time. To have no body there. After, take out the, the blood from your body. Forget the blood. Take out the soul from your body. 
That is what mantra is taking out here. Mantra is taking out the soul from Ayodhya. My friends, Sri Ram did not only left Ayodhya at that time. So many thousands of years ago, in Treta Yoga, Sri Ram left Ayodhya also, and Modi ji had to come and bring back Sri Ram in Ayodhya to get the Ram Mandir to go back up. One thing for sure, I want to let you know, there are many people who will try to destroy us spiritually. But if you do not give up, my friends, in your faith, if you do not give up in your, in your calmness, if you are always aware of your greatness and your divinity, my dear brothers and sisters, the light will always shine in your life. Sometimes there will be shadows. Sometimes there will be dark moments. But the light of your happiness and the light of our blessings will shine again. Don't give up. Mantra had forgotten that she is about, she didn't realize rather, that she is about to take the light out of Ayodhya. She didn't know that she is going to make every citizen of this country, well, Jai Bhagwan, I said this country. Slip of the tongue is not the fault of the man. Isn't it? She did not know that she was going to make every citizen of Ayodhya cry. Like how we're crying now in our country. Every day is fear. Every day we're frightened. Every day we have to watch our backs. We have to be watching around and being alert all the time. That kind of anxiety was there in Ayodhya for 14 years because of one person. One person. Panaji, one person who was not only a physically handicapped person, but she was a mentally handicapped individual. I want you all to remember something tonight. It is sad to see somebody if their body has a medical condition and their body is bent. Very sad. We pray for those people to heal and to feel better. But I want to let you know, it is better to have a bent body and a straight mind than to have a bent mind and a straight body. I wonder if I should ask you all to stand up. Let me see all who's straight. <laughs> it have lots of people, their body's straight. Man, when they sit down in meditation, their back's straight. So. And as soon as they come out of meditation, everything bent. Words bent, thoughts bent, action bent, but body straight in, in meditation. Friends, mantra was that type of person that she was physically bent and mentally bent. And now she's also spiritually bent. She lost contact with God. She forgot, you know, that that's this light, that the Sri Ram will be leaving Ayodhya and leaving Ayodhya in darkness. Mantra also forgot, my friends. You know what she forgot? She forgot that when Sri Ram go to the forest, Sita Mata will go with him. She, well, didn't forget. That time she didn't even know. She didn't anticipate that Sita Devi, who's a young princess, who just came from the home of Maharaj Janak, she will make the decision and she will go with Sri Ram for 14 years in the forest. And she wouldn't mind sleeping on the ground. She wouldn't mind walking bare feet. She wouldn't mind that she has to take out her expensive sari and put on the bark of trees. She wouldn't mind giving up all the luxury of the palace to be with her husband, Sri Ram. Mantra did not anticipate that. And friends, there are some times in our lives when we do not anticipate our decision 
the result can be very devastating. Mantra forgot that Sri Ram is the light of Ayodhya and Mother Sita is the peace of Ayodhya. And when the light in your home goes and the peace of your home goes, what do we have, Roger? Darkness. And when your happiness goes, your peace goes, you know what is to live in a home or to live in a place where there is no peace? Mantra forgot or did not anticipate this will be the result of her action. Friends, always anticipate the result of your words. We must always anticipate the result of our actions. We must always anticipate the result of our decisions and how many people will be affected by our decisions and the, what, what we say, what we do and what we think. And remember that our reaction is agami karma that we are creating for ourselves. It's agami karma that we are creating for ourselves. Friends, mantra did not anticipate Sita ke Ram, Radha ke Shyam, Meera ke Girdhar Nagar Sur ke Ganshyam. Sita ke Ram, Radha ke Shyam, Meera ke Girdhar Nagar Sur ke Ganshyam. Sita ke Ram, Radha ke Shyam. चोर सिया ने राम का साथ निभाया लक्ष्मी ने घर रूप सिया का जग का पाप मिटाया बना दिया इस धरती को राम भक्ति का धाम सीता के राम राधा के शाम मीरा के गिर घर नागर सूर के गन सीता के राम राधा के शाम Yeah.
So, mantra never anticipated. And the sad part is, Mother Kai Kai believed every word of mantra. That's the sad part. Believing the words of a person with evil intention can also put you in trouble. And friends, I wanted to let you know why Mother Kai Kai had also lost what you call Mother Keiki also had forgotten who Sri Ram was. Reason being, she had forgotten who Sri Ram was because now she was overwhelmed by the thought of my son. Listen, she says, Manga hu aj davabahu chati suna hu raj ramahi banabasu he Lehu sabha savati la lasu. Oh, my dear beloved, send Sri Ram to the forest for 14 years. Send Sri Ram away, and your son Bharat will become king of Ayodhya. Now, pay attention to this. Pay attention to this. My son Bharat will become king of Ayodhya. M Y. You see that word M Y? That is the beginning of clouding our right judgment and mind. And it is the recipe for great hurt in our lives. M, Y, and I, capital I. You see those two words? Very dangerous. I means ego, and my means attachment. And Bhagwan said to Sai Baba, he says, that when a person, is, their life is affected or poisoned by ego, then they become obsessed with the possessions of the world and their mind become clouded. So M, Y, I want, to, I want to ask you all to do an experiment. Anytime you see somebody crying, ask them why. Why do you cry? Ask anybody why they cry. <laughs> well, mama said it could be physical pain, right? Which part, Mama? Who have the pain? <laughs> mama is a philosopher, you know. <laughs> she knows where I'm coming from. She's trying to catch me too. <laughs> Okay, Mama said in terms of pain, right? The first thing you will say is what? My body in pain. M Y. My body, my wife, my husband, my children, my money, my house, my land, my car, my car. My kya? <laughs> my kya kuru? What should I do? Every time we cry is because of my MY. And you know, in our local language, you say, hey, behave yourself in a boy. You know me or what? I is this and I is that. And I hold this power, and I am. And if you're not careful, I'll finish you off. I. So ego to stop, Baba. Ego. And this now is what prevented Mother Kaikai from having the love that she had for Sri Ram. My son is better than you. You are not my son. You are Mother Kaushalya's son. You all remember in the Mahabharata? In the Mahabharata, go back to the 25th chapter. In the first verse that is considered to be the Bhagavad Gita, remember that verse in the Bhagavad Gita. It's the first verse in the Bhagavad Gita. What did the Rasha said? Dhrita Rasha said, Dharma Kshetre Kuru Kshetre Samavetaya Yutsavaha Mamaka. 
पांडवाह किम अकुर्वत ओ संजय ओ संजय I cannot see I am blind but please tell me on the field of battle dharma kshetre kurukshetre that is called kurukshetra mama kaha please tell me what did my sons do and do you all know when dhritarashtra asked that question can anybody tell me how many days no you almost there How many days after? Very lucky guess, but you're not quite. You miss it by one. <laughs> you know, the first day war going on and Dhritarashtra's sons winning. Dhritarashtra said, "Oh, Jai Bhagwan, everything going good. How much sons doing? Good, they winning. Okay. Day two, all the people, they his sons hurt. That didn't matter to him." His sons, his son Duryodhana, Dushashana, and others—they hurting the people on the battlefield, which is this war. So therefore, they must be hurt. No problem. Day three, war going on. No question asked. Day four, no question. That Rasha enjoying the war because his sons winning. Day ninth, Arjuna looked at Bhagwan Krishna. He said, "Prabhu, this thing look like real trouble, you know." Bhagwan said, "What do you mean?" He said, "What do you mean?" He said, "Prabhu, all my arrows are going, and it seems as though the Kauravas are becoming more and more powerful. They are getting the support of so many different countries, and so many different people are coming on. And it seems as though we are losing." Bhagwan Krishna looked at Bhishma. I'm sorry, Arjuna, and he said, "Arjuna, once Bhishma." Pitamah is alive. You are not going to win this war. If you have to win this war, the Mahabharat says, the first person you have to take out is Bhishma, because wherever Bhishma passes, all soldiers on your side will fall. And Bhishma, unfortunately, is on the side of the Kauravas. Therefore, Bhagwan Krishna says, Arjuna, you have to use a strategy of how to kill Bhishma. And you know what the strategy was? Bhagwan Krishna told Arjuna, he says, "You have to go and ask Bhishma how to kill him." <laughs> so Arjuna said, "Prabhu ji, that one word. You think he will tell me how to kill him? You know, war going on. You you come and ask me, ah, Baba, how to take you out? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you that secret." so on the ninth night bhagwan krishna and arjuna decided on this clever plan to go over to the camp of bhishma and ask him how to kill him so they went sneak out go through all the different tents and they finally reached the home to the tent where bhishma pitamah was sleeping Duri, um dush uh, sorry arjuna went and he held on to the feet of his great great grandfather and he started massaging his feet while he was sleeping because he knew that this was a great man and if he tells me how to kill him tomorrow will be his last day and arjuna is massaging the feet of his grandfather great grandfather and bishma opened his eyes because he felt the touch he felt the warmth he felt the love of the person that was massaging his feet the manner in which they were doing it and he opened his eyes and he saw arjuna immediately he sat up on the bed and he embraced arjuna and he says why did you come son why did you come did you come to find out how i should how to kill me Arjuna said yes <laughs> I came for you to tell me how to kill you Bhishma smiled he said son I will tell you how to kill me He said tomorrow when the soldiers are on the battlefield and they are all aligned and ready to start this war 
Do you know that no girls are allowed on the battlefield? Arjuna said yes. He said there is one person on the battlefield. I cannot see him other than being a girl. Arjuna was shocked. He said, who is that person? He said, tomorrow, I want you to ask Shikandi to stand up in front of your chariot because Shikandi in his past life was a young girl who was called as Amba. And Shikandi, who was Amba in her past life, suffered tremendously because of me. She died. And the last thought in her mind was that she must be reborn again in the next life as a man. And she must be instrumental to be the one to kill Bhishma Pitamaha. In her last life, she had two sisters. Amba was her name, Ambalika and Ambika. These sisters, I took away their happiness by trying to get them married to your fathers. But that's a katha for another time. There, Amba did not, her marriage failed. And because her marriage, well, her marriage did not fail. She was not accepted by her husband. And as a result of that, the husband I chose for her. As a result of that, she took revenge. And she was now, in, her intention is to kill me. That Amba has now become Shikandi. Let Shikandi be in front of your chariot. I will not see her, I will not see him as a man. I will see him as a woman. And once a woman is on the battlefield, I will drop my weapon. Arjuna, the moment you see that I drop my weapon, I want you to shoot. Jai Bhagwan. As told, Shikandi was placed in front of the chariot of the next day. The war started with the shank, pancha, janya, hirishi, kesha, devadat, tamdananjaya, etc, etc. All the shank was blown. And the battle was going on. And it so happened, as the chariots were going with high speed, Shikandi was in front of Arjuna's. They were heading in the direction of Bhishma. And Bhishma is as if that he had forgotten what he told Arjuna the night before. And when he saw Shikandi, my friends, Shikandi chariot in front, Arjuna's chariot behind, going towards Bhishma chariot, Shikandi was seen by Bhishma. Bhishma dropped his weapons. And the moment he dropped his weapon, Shikandi's chariot turned to the left. And Arjuna, my friends, opened fire on Bhishma. His body was pierced with arrows. He fell off the chariot and was lying on a bear of arrows. But he chose not to die that night. Because he was Chiranjeev. He was blessed to choose his death. And choose the day when he was going to die. And it was not until. Many days after. Until when the sun started moving into Uttarayan. Like January 14th or 15th. As, as it is celebrated. On that day. Bhishma left his body. And because Bhishma fell on the 10th day of the Mahabharata war, coming back to the point, that is when Dhritarashtra asked the question, what happened to my sons on that day? So all through day one to nine, no question asked by the blind king. But when Bhishma fell, he knew that the time for his sons, that their death is imminent. And that is when he asked the question, Mamakaha Pandavaha Kim Akurvat O Sanjaya, please tell me what happened to my sons. The word MY blinds Dhritarashtra mantra. Avinash? Devotees? Children? Mantra was not only a physically crooked person, she was mentally a crooked person. 
my friends dhritarashtra was not only a physically blind man he was a mentally intellectually and spiritually blind man that caused their entire country to suffer in this case mantra caused ayodhya to suffer and in that case in the mahabharata the hastinapur suffered tremendously i know i was supposed to be bhai abis asi bhai abis so much in my heart you know he said baba i just come here to read ramayan are you going mahabharata and thing <laughs> but you see when you compare similarities in comparing the ram katha with that of the mahabharata which shows similarities of the characters that are being portrayed in our on the stage of our dharma my dear brothers and sisters it tells us in the times that we are living in that in kaliyug we have to be even more cautious and even more careful because it is so much more easier for us to forget ourselves and to forget our god it is so very much more easier it is so much easier for us to fall into the wrong company i pray for our children tonight i pray for our grandchildren and our youngsters our youths we pray for the young people who have to live in the kind of place that we are living now and i'm not talking about trinidad and tobago i'm talking about the world because we see day after day time after time what is happening friends mantra the sad part is the sad part is mantra convince mother kake that this is what she must do you know that's the sad part when we become convinced by the wrong doers and that's why people like our gurudev swami chinmayan and the ji people like bhagwan sat sai baba and people like all these great jagat gurus sri sachidanand ganapati ji all these great jagat gurus they have created programs to mold the young minds of our children to keep them on the right path mold their minds through balvihar and balvikas and all those things it's a nice program to get the mind of the youngsters to be molded because friends if the mind gets molded in the wrong channel then the company we keep will become very much detrimental to ourselves the sad part is i i want to conclude tonight with a sad part and the sad part is uh, kk mata was convinced by mantra to do exactly what she asked of her to do not thinking about how many people will be suffering thereafter brothers and sisters and devotees of god we see it happening in many families but sometimes heads of families make decisions and the whole family suffers because of what one person do we see it happening every day and like the saying goes when we become influenced by evil even god cannot help us